we didn't know where the tornado was. Parts of our RV are literally flying off. I can't get out of the truck. I have never before thought like, holy shit, I'm gonna die. Oh my God. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes, and we RV in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys, and our lives were almost really okay. short just a few days ago. In this video, we're going to share some tips about what to do and what not to do if you're in an RV mm. and there's a tornado threat or a tornado warning. Then we're also going to share some huge mistakes that we made. Some and big ones. We weren't adequately prepared and I don't want anyone to ever experience that. Yeah, mother nature is super unpredictable, guys. And I consider myself a thrill seeker, right? I've been through multiple hurricanes. I've always enjoyed it. This was not enjoyable. Well, this one actually had me shaking and Mercedes- It was you... the scariest time of my life. Yeah. Like I have never before thought like, holy I'm gonna die. Mm, yeah, it was it was pretty scary. Mercedes and I, as you guys know, we're back on the road again, which is very exciting. We took a 2,000 mile trip and we spread it over a month so that we could look at land as we traveled from Florida to Colorado. But we've never traveled through Tornado Alley. Um, we didn't have any experience with it. And when we have traveled in that part of the country, it's always been in the fall not in the spring. Exactly. So what made it even more scarier and the reason I was shaking so much, this was our first trip RVing where Mercedes was following yeah. behind me in the Jeep. Yeah. So Bubba Gump, right? Our 3,500 poles, our sandpiper, 42 foot sandpiper. Yeah. Mercedes is following behind because we love our Jeep and ultimately we want to get a class C or a class A. So I'm following behind, which adds a whole level of fear yeah, to this and whole thing. For two and a half years, I kind of got used to having Mercedes in the front seat next to me co-piloting the dog and Sage in the back seat, right? You know, I did have my eye on her in the back camera system. I always had my eye on her. Well, no, when you switch something, it's a big deal. And even the smallest changes can actually really impact your travel significantly. Yeah, and just, just to be clear, guys, the Jeep is beautiful. We can do amazing things with it off-road, mm -hmm. but it's not designed for, for long trips. Thank no, God. but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got 37-inch tires, oh my gosh. you know, three-inch knobbies. It's for climbing. It's not yeah. for highway. So there was stress from Mercedes and there was me worried about them following behind us. We're, I, I, I think we're like the biggest idiots like in we're the not RV the biggest space. idiots, no, but we, we can are. be dumb. We're like, we do the dumbest crap, okay? <laughs> because it never occurred to me and I have family saying, oh, you're going through Tornado Alley and like, and we even got the warning shot the night before, remember, where the lights and the lightning and it was like yeah. just insane. And I actually woke Mercedes up out of bed one night yeah. to bring her outside and there was this incredible light show going on in the sky. It just, it never stopped. There was no sound and the light show was amazing. It was incredible. We all stood there for about 20 minutes just looking at it, right? Yeah. The power of nature and God. But... But we were leaving the next morning and we kind of got a little complacent of, of where we were, right? Because from Florida into Texas, it was uneventful. That light show should have been a it was, warning it, shot and we didn't heed it. And I disagree. And and one more thing I'm going to throw in here. That's fine. One of the things that's so frustrating to me about my wife, right? My beautiful, wonderful life, who I, who I love like more than anybody in the entire world. Obviously. Is that I'm using my app and she's using her app. I like to use Google Maps. Yeah. Mercedes doesn't like to use Google Maps. I use the iPhone. She uses the iPhone or the Siri, and I can't stand Siri. And one of the things that was so frustrating about this entire trip, she refused to use. I'm the one that's navigating, right? She's following me, but she would not use the Google app. And it would constantly tell her one way, and my app would tell me a different way. There's many ways to get to the same place, right, guys? Every five or ten minutes. What is your app telling you? Well, mine tells me we got to go right or left. I just want you guys to know that my way is the better way. Always, of course <laughs> it is, right? Of course it is. Back to the tornado safety and back to what was going on. So we are on the very last leg of our trip, right? We're going from Sunset, Texas to Amarillo, Texas. But that's when the weather really started to change. So we set out in the morning. Mercedes is following me as normal. But as we got into the trip, the skies actually started to darken a little bit. 
Yeah, so we knew that day that our goal was Amarillo. We're two and a half hours into this four hour trip and Mercedes like, let's stop. I'm not feeling right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just not comfortable. So yeah. we decided to stop in Lubbock, Texas. And I asked Mercedes, just call ahead and see if you can find, you know, a campground in Amarillo, in Amarillo and see what they say. Because ultimately she's going to decide if we go to Amarillo or not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to force my wife to drive when she wants to lay up. Drive! <laughs> <laughs> it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. And this awesome lady, I think her name was Darla. She was just a total sweetheart. And the spot that she found for us that was long enough for us so we didn't have to detach was literally on Sage Drive. Our daughter's name is Sage, so that's a God shot right there, okay? This is like, you are meant to go to this place. She mentions, if things get really bad, you can go to the bathhouses. They're made of cinder block. That's the safety area. Right. And I was oblivious to the fact that the weather, you know, was gonna be that bad. Well, as soon as we left Lubbock, we immediately saw this dark front, yeah. and it was pretty far off, right? And I'm seeing this, and I, I see it come the front coming closer, but it was on my left side the entire ride. So the times were like so close that it was like rain starting in 32 minutes, and we would arrive in 30 minutes. So it was just close enough that we're like, we can beat the storm. Yeah, and we're going back and forth on the walkie-talkies. You think we can make it? You think yeah. we can make it? Comparing, comparing the apps. Yeah. You guys know what it's like to set up an RV in the pouring rain, and definitely yeah. not in the lightning storm. So we were about a mile away, and that storm was holding off. I'm, I'm thanking God for getting us there safe, right? I jumped the gun a little bit. But then all of a sudden, I start seeing things things that are like, oh my gosh, this is unreal. The first thing that I start seeing is the awning cover is like going like this. And John, it looked like you were doing the death wobble. Yeah, she's on the radio saying, baby, you doing you a death okay? wobble? And I'm okay? saying, no. It's, and, and this is a great point, guys. It's one of the reasons why I love a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. Mercedes could see the rig doing this all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. And in the 3500, I couldn't even feel it. I mean, yeah. I knew it was windy outside. I could see the ominous clouds just about over the top of us. Yeah. And again, I'm trying to race to the, get to the campground. But Mercedes is on the road saying, hey, something's wrong. Something's it wrong. It literally looked like his front and his back were not doing the same thing. It was so scary to just watch this happening. I went ahead, looked in the rear view mirror, and I see the RV doing this behind me, Yeah. right? And I, within a yeah. split second, it wasn't just dripping rain and, and, and then a little lightning. No. It was like the heavens opened up and a it wall, started hail. pouring. Yeah. I'm on the radio screaming, are you okay, are you okay? Right as the heavens opened up and it started dumping, immediately my phone went off saying there was a tornado warning, like a split second. Oh, yeah. There was no warning at all on the phones whatsoever. I actually got four weather alerts. So there was the flash flood, there was the thunderstorm, I got the tornado, and I got the hail. So it was like, you're all right. Yeah, you're all hell broke stuff. out within seconds. Yeah. As soon as it started dumping, I literally couldn't see two feet in front of the rig. Mm -hmm. And I had just passed an off ramp. Mm -hmm. So the best I could do was just slowly pull over into the breakdown lane, put on my hazards and sh just sit and wait it out. And pray that nobody hits us from behind. Right. Man, hope there's no tornado, man. This thing's gonna take me off driving right into a wall of solid hail and it was so loud we could barely hear each other through the walkie-talkie. Yeah, I'm screaming and I can't even see her in the camera and she had her lights on at this point. And it's terrifying because at this point I'm on the side of the road. I am completely powerless. Like if there's a tornado, I am SOL. Then I see all of a sudden that awning that was getting loose like 30 seconds or a minute before. And granted, we're parked on the side of the road now. She's seeing things I can't see. It flies off, okay? It's like, our awning cover completely ripped off, babe. Parts of our RV are literally flying off. Yeah, and I think one of the scariest things when you're in a situation like this is we didn't know where the tornado was. We didn't yeah. know where it was going to touch down, and I think that's the scariest thing. I can literally, at this point, see the RV going like crazy. Mercedes is on the walkie-talkie screaming that pieces of the RV are falling off, yeah. and I was connected to the RV. So what really scared me wasn't being in the truck, it was being connected to the RV because I knew these things, they'll break apart in seconds, but I knew if it took that, I was going with it. She is, she's a trooper. 
He's a trooper. Wow, Sage, we got hail. Sage is like a trooper. Now, granted, <laughs> I am not showing my freaked outness because the last thing is her mother that I should be doing is good. like freaking out. Yeah, what am did. I going to be telling her? She was, she was like, oh, this is pretty back loud. Seat. Yeah, she's yeah. doing her thing, you know. God bless her. She's yeah. like the best. Yeah. The dog, on the other hand, was like, "Yeah, I this kept... is not normal, people. <laughs> Skippy was going crazy. He was crying. I could hardly hear him, but I could hear him whimpering. I, a couple times I reached back and I just, you know, soothed it's okay, him. okay, Skippy. Yeah, it, probably one of the dumbest mistakes I ever made was as soon as the the rain let up enough, I looked in the rearview mirror and I could see the black awning cover that Mercedes was talking about and I was shocked that it was laying on the ground right next to the highway. Yeah. I got out of the car and I ran back to grab it and I wasn't paying too much attention to the traffic mm -hmm. and I had this 18 wheeler go oh, flying God. by me that I didn't even realize was there. Mercedes thought it was gonna hit me. Yeah, it was so close. But that was just a dumb, dumb move. At this point, once the hail subsides enough that we can start driving, I'm thinking we're in the clear, right? No, because remember how I said we had like four warnings on the phone? The storm started to lighten up and I knew we were only less than a mile away Point from- seven miles. Point seven miles away from where we were going to camp. And so I wanted to get the heck out of there. So when the storm stopped, I said to Mercedes, let's go. Let's see if we can get there. Yeah. That's when the flood warning started popping up on our phone. Oh, gosh. We still had trouble seeing. But we try to make our way over to the campground. The amount of water yeah, that it, was just pouring through the roads. There's yeah. about a foot in some areas. Water's coming in fast, John. Yeah. But I knew I went through a couple of places where I was afraid the water was going to come inside the, you know, the truck. Oh, and the RV. Like it was literally right. that high that I mean, oh my goodness, that was that yeah. was crazy. I think the thing that scared me most is the helplessness I felt. Mm -hmm because it was so bad, the hail was so big. It was three quarters of an inch round. When, when the storm stopped, it looked like there had been a snowstorm. That's how much hail there was on the ground. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like all this going on with Sage and Mercedes in the vehicle behind me. I think there's a lot of things that we learned from this. And I think this is probably now a good time to talk about our dumbest mistakes and our tips for survival because the two go hand in hand. <laughs> and we just kind of learned a lot of this. Yeah, I need to have more due diligence in not just checking the weather of where I depart from, but also checking the weather of where we're arriving, checking the weather in between. It's incumbent upon me to ask, where are the storm shelters? Where do I go if things really hit the fan? So a great point, guys. Um, when you check into a campground, ask when you check in where the safest building is where you know it, and typically it's going to be a shower or a laundry room or mm -hmm. a restroom one of the first big mistakes that i made was i pushed it i figured that i could race and get to this campground before this storm had hit because i didn't want to set up in crazy weather and get soaking wet setting my rv up i tried to beat a storm i had two opportunities to pull off under a bridge underpass which would have given me an opportunity to get together with Skippy, Sage, and Mercedes and get us up to safety underneath the bottom of the bridge. That was my biggest mistake. About 30 minutes before this whole thing happened, we took a clip of those ominous clouds and we posted it on MeWe and an RV Odd Squad member kind of came back with a comment, hey, be super, super careful. And she shared a story that happened to her brother. Mm -hmm. And she wrote back, if there's a tornado, do not stay with the car or the RV. Get out, get into a hole or up under a bridge, hold each other tight. Don't worry about getting wet. Her brother was safe, but the RV and the truck got taken away and was destroyed. Which I really would have thought the opposite because they're so darn heavy. I really would think that they'd be safer, right? Because we're talking tons and tons of pounds, but no, it's actually safer <laughs> to get to get out. I guess they fly really easily. They fly really easily and they're built like toothpicks, guys. You can't wait until... You physically see the tornado because you at won't that be point. able to see it yeah and well and and they're so fast at that point it's too late so the idea that like oh, i'll just keep a window open and i'll run out and hide in a ditch no 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 you really have to be proactive on this 
And one of the things that scared me most is, is that was the loudness. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just that I couldn't see around or that I had to scream for Mercedes through the walkie talkie to make sure those guys are okay. I've heard that a tornado coming through towards you sounds like a freight train. But we couldn't even hear it. But we, well, we couldn't hear anything. It was so loud that we the didn't hail. know where the tornado was. Yeah. But super interesting is this spot back in Lubbock, that place where she wanted to stop and sit two hours short of where we wanted to go. They did have a tornado touchdown. Had it not been for the stinking street name, we would have parked and stayed in order to beat the storm. We would have been in the worst part of it. Which is the funniest thing. Even though it was terrifying and Everything scary. Everything inside me wanted to stop there. But because she called ahead and talked to a really kind person who told her that the campground was on Sage Road. It was like, she okay. said, Let, we got, this is a sign. We've got to finish this trip to there. And we, I believe we're the luckiest most blessed people on the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Which actually brings us to our next video. <laughs> where we encountered the rudest RVer we've ever met. And, you know, you got to remind yourself you're blessed because you just can't make this stuff up. This one is going to blow your mind, guys. I didn't think any human on the planet would be capable of doing this and disrespecting somebody so, so much. It was but so in our next video, we're going to talk about the rudest camper we've ever met in our life. See you in the next video.